friends with Madame La Guillotine's lover. She <laughs> is her lover. She means the executioner. <laughs> he cuts the locks off every head just for me. Uh, but I don't know if I'll be in my usual place tomorrow. Who will collect my locks? I'll take them. Make myself an aristo with them. Only of mice sitting in the Bastille. Yeah. Why won't you be here, old woman? Oh, yes, well, well, uh, my grandson here, he's a... Uh, well, he's a... Uh, He's got smallpox. <gasps> or the plague. Oh, they won't let me in the game. He's got the plague. He's got the plague! Get him out of here! Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. What was she thinking? Bringing him into the city. I don't feel too good. <coughs> Anthony! Diamonds look dull by comparison. Percy, they are too much. Smart Reeves, you outshine those paltry stones. Your brilliance is already legendary. You are the supremely talented, excessively intelligent, and soon to be ridiculously wealthy, Marguerite Saint Just. Oh, you mean Marguerite Blakeney? You're full of nonsense, but I do enjoy every word of it. Mademoiselle, your brother sent me to tell you that everyone needs to suffer. Take my glass, Louise. Sir, I believe you're supposed to be nervously waiting for me. She's an actress, a French actress. My very good friend Camille tells me she's considered to be the cleverest woman in Europe. But why is the cleverest woman marrying the silliest man? You mean the richest man? Sir Percy Blakeney is wealthy beyond compare. Mum will want him for me. You'll go to Crete in my next standard about like that. The sooner you sit, the sooner you'll get the soul. And then we can play some cards, eh? Poor Marguerite. She will find it hard to make friends in this chilly climate. Jean, I'm sure England will embrace my sister just as Paris will. Indeed. London is already seen to the best dressed woman in hat. But, Your Highness, not only was she an actress, but she is a Republican. And in France, that makes her desirable. But here in your England. In my England, she's marrying the most English Englishman alive. Now, she's a royalist. <laughs> Signifying unto us the mystical union that is betwixt Christ and his church. Yes. 
some brave French aristocrat, no doubt. Let's claim it, Russell Brown. Firstly, I shall tell you composed of the poem of the man. Oh, alas, I don't think the ladies would speak. Oh, Sir Percy, you simply must recite it. Oh, yes, please, I'll simply die if you don't. You mustn't allow a pretty lady to die, Sir Percy. <laughs> Your Highness. Proceed. <coughs> The Scarlet Pimpernel by Sir Percival Blakeney. A better name. No, 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 that's just the title. <laughs> I've written an entire quatrain. <laughs> they seek him here. And they seek him there. There is Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? What is he in hell? Oh! <laughs> that's dim. Illusive. Pimpernel. <laughs> 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 Is that my filter that you made the poet? Seek me, Your Highness. I made the thing a full time like cravat. Nothing to it. Well, if you won't play cards with me, who have you invited to play with? I believe I saw Mr. Pitt earlier. This card playing is a sickness as politics. I'll never get a decent wage out of him. And so it is, I'm left to challenge our Prime Minister. Oh. Shall we, ladies? <laughs> <laughs> some champagne and toast my marriage. Will you tell her? I haven't decided yet. Everything happened so quickly I didn't <coughs> consider the matter. The lady making will suffer every time you cross the channel. She's strong, Andrew. She would go. Better this you found call. I haven't realized you've returned from France already. Glad you could make it for my nuptials. Indeed a day for celebration. Lady Blakeney must be exceedingly pleased oh, today. No more than I, I am sure. Perhaps just a bit more pleased. Not only has she married London's most eligible bachelor, <coughs> but she has also had revenge on a dear enemy. Revenge? Did I marry me? No, Sir Percy. <laughs> she has had revenge on the Marquis de saint Cyr. Perhaps so. Well, I assumed you knew. What sort of revenge are we talking about? She had the man arrested and went to the guillotine yesterday. The guillotine? How do you know? You speak recklessly, Baroness. I was there. I saw Sansir and his family meet their fate. Percy! <clears throat> the family? Why, yes. The entire family? The, the children, too? I thought you knew. Why do you suggest my wife has anything to do with this? The feud, of course. The San Jus family has been at odds with the San Sanzir family. Ever since the Sanzir had that proper mark beaten from talking to his daughter. But she would never... I am so sorry, Sir Percy. I really did assume you knew all about it. <laughs> Why do you quit Lady Blakey? My husband and I were with Sanzir when we came to arrest him. My husband demanded to see the arrest warrant. It was signed by Margaret San Jus. She accused him of being a traitor to the Republic. Claimed he was working with the Austrians to rescue the Queen and her family. Baroness, if this news were to become gossip, it could be damaging to the Lady Blakeney. Out of respect for Sir Percy, I will speak of this to no one else. You have my word. I am sorry. She must never know. She must never suspect that I know what she has done. We must protect our secrets with even greater vigilance. Her brother works for the very committee that we fight. Maybe she's more Our wife is not blind to what his beloved France has become. Then surely we must trust that Lady Blakeney recognizes the land of terror for what it is. Percy, the Baroness has no love for Lady Blakeney. Perhaps she lies about it. upon that. Perhaps you could ask Lady Blakeney. Ask her what? We are enemies to her home country, and I have brought her into our midst. <laughs> Possibly delight me more, madame. Madame La Guillotine is hungry! Get to the Risto! Feed Madame La Guillotine! Get to the Risto! Get to the Risto! Get to the Risto! Good news, citizens. Citizen Robespierre and Prosecutor Poitier de Tinville have called for an increase in the number of executions. Woo! Madame La Guillotine will dine very well.
well today. I have 25 names here. What's a few? <laughs> that I am outnumbered by the hot-blooded French. I shall sound my retreat and disappear. Armand, if you will join me in my, uh, hallway for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps I'll be not sure. I'm sure he did not realize what he was saying. Ephemeral! We have been married for less than two weeks, and I've already lost my husband's love. It's not possible, Marguerite. Sir Percy adores you. Remember, I was there when he met you. He charged backstage to meet you, and he never left your side for that entire month. He was a moth to your flame. He was. He was a moth to my flame, and the moment he captured the flame, it was over. It is so clear. <coughs> he is a fool, and quite famous for it, too. I thought this foolish behavior was an act. I thought the fool was a mask he put on for others. In France, he was different, strong, and passionate. Like a Frenchman? Yes, perhaps. But now he plays the fool all the time, public and private. And the greatest fool in England looks at his clever French wife. Contempt. Oh, Marguerite, what shall you do? Do. Is there something I can do? I am an actress, darling girl. I will act as though I do not notice his disdain. Come back to France. You've only ba married a baronet. Not a troop here. You'll be safe there, and you'll be surrounded by your admirers. No, whatever would the wife of Sir Percy do in Paris? I can't take to the stage ever again. And besides, somebody's claimed all my favorite roles as her own. <coughs> Angeline, nobody is safe in 
Paris anymore. Do you think the citizens would differentiate between a baronet and a baron? No. Maybe he's guaranteed safety under the revolutionary government. But your brother would protect you. He gains influence every day. Citizens should not be Even our mon is not safe. Of course he is. Enough. France is not an option. Lazine, what do I have to complain about? I will spend his fortune. That's why I married him in the first place, isn't it? It is certainly not a love match. How could the brilliant star of Europe love the greatest fool in England? But come, let me show you why I love an English garden. Use that address for all future communications. Sally will see that it gets to me, of course. All communicating me will come to this flower in red ink. Do not trust anything that comes without the pimpernel, as you wish. Percy, what has happened between you and my sister? You must not speak of this to anyone, Armand. You mean I must not speak to Marguerite? Why worry her any more than you already do? I also mean the lovely little Mademoiselle Lange. I'm afraid absolute secrecy is required. Percy, why have you lost your regard for my sister? Lost my regard. Now who sounds English? Trust them. You no longer trust her. The lives of 20 men rest in my hands, as does Sally's life, your life. I cannot afford to trust her, nor can you. Perhaps when this is all over, you will love her once again? Again? Do you really think I have stopped loving Marguerite? Why do you think this is so damned hard? So, Sally, is it? Do we have the whole place to ourselves tonight? No, no. There's a body returning from France tonight. I expect his party to arrive any minute now. France? You got a frog coming in here tonight. Oh, he's a nice one. Not one of those uppity French You got a lot of French in here. Don't know if I can say have you know. Being murdering Frenchies. My sister Bernadette needs a nice, safe place to stay for a few days while I can do <coughs> business. Don't know if I'm all associating with murderers. Ah, oh, it'll be all right. You don't get any more royal than the fisherman's rest. You just enjoy your pints and I'll make sure your sister has a nice, quiet room made ready. Sally! Ho! Sally! But Anthony, hush! Sir Percy, can you control him? Oh, it's fishy, Sally. How can I, a mere baronet? Tell Lord Anthony Dewhurst to do anything. Oh, my lady. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see you there. Please, let me get your cloak. John! <laughs> oh, how many horses did you bring in? Rooms. Do they need rooms, Sally? All we'll need is some of your best ale, Sally, and some food to warm us up. The fog is a trial. Do you see what it's doing to my cravat? Bloody nuisance. <laughs> well, the fog brings the channel for some danger for a moth. Captain of Percy's daydream was one of the finest seamen alive. I'll be fine, my right. Well, then I'll fetch you some bread and cheese for your trip, while John sees to the horses. I'll get some pot to warm up some of his stew. Fine day when your own sister bosses you about. Are you all caught in the channel tonight? Uh, uh, no, uh, just some aunt here. France has become damned uncomfortable of place. Lady Blakeney and I are returning to London as soon as Armand is aboard the Daydream. And the rest of us are off to Percy's estate at Southport, going to get a bit of hunting in. I hope the Lady Blakeney will forgive us for stealing your husband away so soon. The wise wife knows better than a stand between a man and a fox hunt. <laughs> you do not need to accompany me down to the docks. This fog is treacherous. I will miss you unbearably. We can't be back soon. Jean will require your service to be Please, be careful, Armand. Why do you worry so? Your good friend Chauvelin will look after me. Chauvelin cannot protect you if Fouquier or Robespierre turn on you. Do not put all your trust in Chauvelin, brother. He's a true revolutionary. Huh. Am I not also a true revolutionary? Do not jest with me. You are a man with a rational brain. And that is dangerous when the body is ten feral. Rational thought no longer controls the body. I know. Worry not, there's still a chance that everything will right itself. Marguerite, give Percy a chance. Trust that your marriage also has a chance to right itself. La Amor, if I am not permitted to worry about you, then you must not worry about me. My husband is the toast of London society. 
Haven't you heard this latest bon mot? The Scarlet Pimpernel by Sir Percival Blakeney, baronet. And I am equally admired. For such admiration, how can anything be in this? No go, the captain will leave without you. The world is devastated, but I must confess I did hear something about you, Mary. I imagine everyone in Paris has heard about it by now. Am I forever branded a traitoress by the good citizens? <laughs> oh, dear. Your silence is a bit more than I'm ready to hear. I did not wish to cause a pain on your feet. I still think of you with fondness. Yes, Paul, you were fond of me. Perhaps you would be willing to render our beloved France a small Service. service. Just a small service, a trifle, really. Something to distract you from your boredom. Boredom? You suggest that I am bored. You suggest that I look bored. Perhaps I have chosen the wrong word for me. English is not, after all, my first language. Nonsense. You speak it like a native. You could probably pass for an Englishman. You probably have passed for one. We share a facility for languages, which brings me back to my little thought. Citizen of Robespierre. Robespierre? This then is no little thought, Monique. You. you have perhaps heard of the Scarlet Pimpernel. Heard of. We hear of nothing else. We wear our hats a la Scarlet Pimpernel. We trim our skirts a la Pimpernel. Lud love us, Paul, so Percy has written a poem to celebrate the man. The citizens of Bahri also talk of him. His reputation for daring has turned him into a mystical figure. And here he is a hero. What do you want from me? I believe the Pimpernel is an Englishman. His loyalty to the crown is impudent. His ability to disappear. He must be English. But he seems to speak perfect French, so I imagine he was raised and educated by French nannies and tutors. <coughs> Therefore, he moves in the same circles in which you are so admired. Not that every member of the upper class speaks fault in French. So Percy pains my ear every time he attempts it. Why don't he find him for us? Us? For France. Ignoring the fact that what you were asking me to do would heartily offend my husband's good friend, the Prince of Wales. What exactly do you think I could do? You move in the same circles as he does. Here in England, he'll not guard his identity so zealously. All you have to do is alert me to his identity so I can watch his movements. And then when he embarks for France... You capture him? And then what? Send him to the guillotine? You execute him? He is an enemy to the Republic. He is brave and noble. You admire him. Yes. Yes, I admire him. And you will allow this petty admiration to keep you from helping France. I am no longer a chit of 18, Chauvelin. You cannot manipulate me into helping you. Manipulate! You help because you believe in our vision. Do not think that I've forgotten the past simply because I chose to speak with you. <laughs> the past. You refer to Sans here. You know I do. I simply encourage you to do what any true citoyen of France would do. The wife of Sir Percival Blakeney is beyond your reach, Chauvelin. Scurry back to France. You no longer have influence here. This is not finished, Lady Blakeney. Is that tale far enough from Calais for you to escape anyone's notice? Worried, Sally, but I'm not even going on this one. Well, if you're not going, then I feel much better about their chances for success. The cove is deep enough for the daydream to set anchor and hide. So far, the soldiers haven't strayed too far from Calais, so the spot remains undiscovered. We hope. Have I not earned your faith by now? This plan is solid. It's better than solid. This one is inspired. Better than the old woman with the flagrant grandson? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Better than the farmer's family covered in sewage. <laughs> oh, I hate that one. He brought the stench back across the channel with you. I like the one we were dressed as monks traveling to the monastery. How did you convince the little duchess to cut her hair into a monastery, Miss Percy? Poor oh, duchess. It hasn't grown back yet. <laughs> I saw her at the theater last week, and she spotted an old wig like a queen from a generation past. 
Percy, I'm never sure if the fashionable pop is completely inactive. We need to get aboard the gate ourselves. Tony, you need to head back to London for Lady Lake. Oh, Miss Sam, you get prettier every time I see you. When are you going to run away from your father and move to London? When my husband takes me. And since you're married. Is he? Married, I mean. It can be so hard to tell. Oh, you didn't need to get up on my account, Sally. Although Lord Anthony might take exception to Sir Percy's behaviour. Well, Anthony, are you feeling territorial? Love, madame, I know I'm a poor specimen of a husband, but surely you do not disavow me already? I do not believe it was Lord Anthony on my lap. <laughs> <laughs> do you hear that, Tony? Lord Anthony on her lap. <laughs> my husband's capacity for amusement is boundless. I, however, have seemed to achieve my limit. Husband, I believe you've plenty of opportunity. Oh, yes, I can hear my hounds baying from here. Well then, Lord Anthony, Sir Percy's carriage and perfectly matched team before await us. Perfectly matched? You see, I'm not just talented with a cravat. I can also pick out a perfectly matched team of four. Must be good for something, eh, wife? Good hunting, gentlemen. Husband, the fox will be the one running away from you. <laughs> Lady Blakeney's tongue's a trifle sharp. I'm <coughs> sure she drew blood that time. That one wouldn't recognize the truth if it rode up on a perfectly matched team and slapped her in the face. To think Sir Percy here is some kind of idiot. She's the idiot. It's exhausting. How long can you keep it up, Percy? Do you see another choice? No executions, did I? Of course there are. Oh. Shut up. Go back. Excellent. What do you have to report? Unfortunately, I have not yet determined the identity of the Scarlet Prisoner. That is unfortunate, especially for you. I do have an idea, citizen. Well then, I do not have all day. If someone were to enter English society, that person might be able to identify the people more easily. In what capacity were they to society? Perhaps as a special envoy. Prime Minister Pitt does not approve of our government. How do we ensure this envoy's acceptance? With the proper letters of introduction, the envoy would be admitted into the highest levels of society. Perhaps the former ambassador to England, the Comte de Tournay, may be prevailed upon to assist with introduction. The man and his entire family are in prison. He's scheduled for immediate execution. So much the better. He will be marvelous. Who will be this envoy? As you know, I have some small acquaintance with Lady Blakeney, formerly my graphic son Luz. Of course, Armand's sister, Beatrice. I believe she can be engaged to assist our mission. As she did with San Seer. Exactly! What about your pet, Minx, Bernadette? She is already in England. I will use her and her acting skills to infiltrate the more gossipy part of English society. You do like your actresses. Deception is a subtle tool. Make this happen immediately. Send for Deterne. The sooner we have the Pimpinel's identity, the sooner we have his head. You don't want me to ever receive another one of those notes with that ridiculous flower on it. Tournay, 
Wie kommt die Tournee? Sie sind die Tournee? Sie sind die Tournee. Take them. We are more than capable of walking the way we even to our death. Mama, Paul will not know. Come, Suzanne. Rosette. Remember who you are. Sergeant Blaine reached into his pocket and felt the square of paper. And in that little moment, he knew what that paper was. It was from him. Yes. <laughs> On that little scrap of paper was his seal. The little red flower. The scarlet pimpernel. Lee Wei was a fool. He let the pimpernel slip through his gate. Just as a oh, way. Man. He paid for stupidity with his head. Now me, I'm no fool, no king loving. Are we still rescuing tricks if we get through Bebo's gate? Bebo won't be fooled. Yeah, I need to get through. Man, I'm the beer <laughs> Bebo was busy today. Which way are you going with those? Fella, I thought I might take them over your house, Sergeant. Maybe they'll come out your door. <laughs> Where do you think I'm taking them? How do I know you've bodies in there? You heard him, boy. Open them up. Seeking Aristos out in caskets. Caskets? An undertaker? Why, he, he just went this way moments ago. You let the pepper now through your gates. You imbecile! Open the gates, Sergeant, quickly! It's the pepper now, men. Let's catch this miscreant and finish this. For France! For France! For Somebody, the Comte de Tournay, wrote to your call from just hours before we arrived. Do we know why? The Comtesse has no idea. Percy, the entire family was slated for the guillotine. Huh. I think it is time Sir Percy paid his new brother of all visits. Perhaps Armand will know what has happened at the Tournay. Get the Comtesse and her family back over to Dover and send the daydream back to me. What about Lady Blakeney? Tell her I am detained in my estate. You cannot leave her alone to attend Lord Grenville's ball? Should be humiliated! Then I'd better move quickly, then. <sighs> Andrew, watch out for lovely French women. You'll find yourself caught in their perfume and clever words before you're back on solid English soil. I don't know what you're talking about, Percy. Blood, she's beautiful. <laughs> and so brave. <sighs> Good to know you're going to be sensible about this. <laughs> Foster Grimm has been drawing quite a crowd for the executions. I believe it is becoming a civic responsibility to attend the executions. So you don't think the masses are there for the spectacle? No, of course not, Citizen Robespierre. The people believe it is their duty to witness the will of the people.
how shall we have that if I ever receive another one of these notes, he will eat it. Keep him 
out of the way by sending him on time consuming errands. I'm leaving for London, Jean. I am to take you to Renee's place as ambassador. How long will you be gone? As long as it takes me to identify the skull of Kundanet. How will you get an entree? I understand Mr. Pitt is quite attached to the Comte de Tournay. De Tournay has written letters of introduction for me. Did he? So he betrayed his aristocratic principles after all. But with his family rescued by the Scarlet Pimpernel, how were you able to compel him to cooperate? He is completely unaware that his family escaped. He believes he secured a reprieve for them by writing those letters. He simply moved into the North Tower at the vast scale, for now. Take care around the prince when you arrive. He considers the Scarlet Pimpernel a national hero. I do not believe the fiancé of one man should be so concerned for the well-being of another man. Are you positive you have to marry Armand? Armand will be a great leader one day. I would not give up the stage for anything else. Then I will be sure to teach him everything I know. I am an idiot because I have worked very hard to convince her that I am an idiot. <coughs> Don't wait for a response. We'll have to move quickly if we're to this one. John, get in here! <laughs> Put into your parish clothes. What we're we going to let into Paris. The sand you. Why, tonight? Fox thicker than witch's tea. All the better for a little adventure like you. No one is here. John? Miss Bernadette, what are you doing back at Fisherman's Rest? What kind of walking is that, John? I just met that clock around London with your brother. I'm going right back to London. I just came down here to see what you were doing at the Fisherman's Rest. Who's that man I just saw leaving? Don't know. Probably one of Sally's boyfriends. She has about 20. <laughs> <laughs> 20. One more. John! <laughs> I know Sally to tell you something. A letter. <coughs> to take to France. To Saint Just. France? This? Saint Who? Sally makes me deliver her love letters to her beau. Who lives on the other side of the village? You're lying, John.
know who the Scarlet Pimpernel is. He wrote this! He was just here! I don't, I don't know! Tell me, John. I won't. I die first! Who has ever been 
fortunate enough to see Margaret Fitzsan do on stage. Standing complete agreement. Who is this? Your Highness, allow me to introduce <coughs> Paul Sugarloaf. Oh yes, a special envoy from France. Countess, I've managed to the contest to know that Marguerite Blakeney is a particular favorite. She would do well to remember that. We'll change that. Nasty old crows too. <laughs> <laughs> Heat. Have you thought any more about that at all, favorite? You have had my obstacle. Never. You would protect people like that all the witch the contest. She is no <coughs> I will not deliver a brave man to you and your reign of terror. Your lack of conviction tears at me, but it does not surprise me. Weakness and treason in the run of the Sanctuary's family. Treason? Who has committed treason? Are you suggesting that Armand has betrayed the Republic? What nonsense is this? Proof of a mom's treason. Provided to you by this woman. Who is she? Who are you? He usually calls me Benedette. Usually. It is a letter written and signed by the Scarlet Pimpernel himself. It is addressed to your brother. It is a forgery. Someone is playing a cruel trick. Oh, it's will really not. Had a spill of some blood with my hands on it. You did not mention that you were injured. Not my blood. Read it for yourself. Whose blood is this? Does it matter? Look, here's Amon's address. And here is the little red flower of the so-called Scarlet Pimpernel. I know the symbol like I hate. I've seen it too many times before. It's still not truth. Amon didn't write the letter just because someone is- You know perfectly well that this is sufficient proof to see Armand executed. How do you expect me to identify the Scarlet Pimpernel? Sir Andrew is one of the Pimpernel's men. I can say that with certainty. Perhaps. <coughs> He is even the Pimpernel himself. Sir Andrew. We know they are planning a mission for France. This ball would provide excellent cover for a meeting. Get me proof of the Scarlet Pimpernel's identity. No more? When I am certain that I know the Scarlet Pimpernel's identity, you will get the letter. How are you enjoying your LB? 
information, mother. Excuse me. English society is quite the jump up for an actress. I believe I have always surrounded myself with elevated society. In France, my salon was frequented by great artists who guessed the thinking Republicans, brilliant writers. Was it your friends then that convinced you to doom the entire Saint Cyr family to death? I. I saw the arrest warrant. Your name is his accuser. I know. How fortunate for you that you've been able to have it both ways. Darling of the Republicans and now fashion leader of the British aristocracy. Very nice. Nothing is ever that simple. The guillotine is! But I suppose you've already secured your safety. Your brothers too, no doubt. Ah, here's your benefactor now. Monsieur Chauvin. I think I'll have a drink to your health. May it fail immensely. <laughs> Certainly not welcomed in this foggy land. I saw you with Sir Andrew. Does this mean we have already discovered something? Thanks to you, I'm running out of safe places. Well, let's focus on our mom's safety, shall we? Here's a note from the Scarlet Pimpernel. And? She will give me that infernal letter. As soon as I am certain that I know the Scarlet Pimpernel's identity, you have my word. I am doing this for our mom. Not for France, not for you. Members of the League of the Scarlet Pimpers are meeting here. In this room. They're meeting at midnight. And what about the Pimpernel? He'll be here. I saw the flower. Thank you, Margaret. It's the second time you've manipulated me, used me. It's the second time you've made me feel dirty. You'll speak to me as if we're friends. Very well, <coughs> Lady Blakeney. <coughs> I return to Paris from the port of London. You, head back to Dover. Dover might be a bit uncomfortable for me right now. Maybe if you refrain from killing people this time. <laughs> I've also heard that you betrayed her. Dim chili out here. Have you noticed? 
I won't disturb your reverie. Good night, my dear. Stay. Please. To what point, madame? Would have told the world that she loved me as much as any man had ever loved a woman. I felt cherished, mm. worshipped. You wish to be worshipped? Blind, unquestioned devotion. Do you wish me to be like one of my hounds? Oh. Somehow, I have lost your love. Mm. Madame, I'm quite fatigued. Why do you play the fool with me? I know you've played before for others. Not with me. I'm sure I'm not mistaken. This is an act and must be. Good night, my dear. Percy! I need your help. My help? Are you in some difficulty? I might have been foolish. We may be in trouble. In France, with citizen Chauvelin. Oh, Percy, can't you ask the prince to intercede on his behalf? Use your influence. Oh, madame, the prince will not interfere so long as Parliament has refused to act. But surely with your money. I should think your friendship with Chauvelin should hold greater sway. Percy, I need you. Please be the sort of man I can lean on. Surely such a friend to the Republic as you are content any number of supporters in Paris. The woman who denounced the Marquis St. Cyr and sent his entire family to the guillotine must hold more influence than I could ever dream of commanding. Manipulating me into. Into what, Marguerite? Nothing. Nothing. Can you really do nothing for Armand? I will do what I can. Uh, but I need to travel to my tailor in the morning, and I really must get some sleep before then. Sink me! The sun is over, oh, stop. <laughs> Fish, my dear. I've done nothing yet. Marguerite, <coughs> why did you tell me the truth before we met? Why didn't you come to me and show along the road? I suppose I didn't trust your love. No. Do you trust me? Andrew? Uh, impossible. The man hates to get dirty almost as much as I do. <laughs> but, but why do you ask? No special reason. I'm just curious. Every woman in London is wondering who he is. I'd warrant your friend Chauvelin would like very much to know who the Pimpinel is. Uh, but no, the notion that Andrew could be the Scarlet Pimpinel is beyond ludicrous. I'm glad. I wouldn't want it to be Sir Andrew.
crew of the Scarlet Pimpernel and the rest of the League of the Scarlet Pimpernel are headed to France from London to rescue your father. Yes, Sir Andrew said they would depart from London this morning. Well, you mustn't tell a soul. It is a wonderful secret. They have to sneak in and out of France right under the nose of the Committee of Public Safety. Under the nose of Paul Chauvelin. What have I done? What is it, Marguerite? How lucky you are to have such a man love you. Such a man. <laughs> Heroic, influential, rich. But isn't your husband just such a man? Have you met Sir Percy? <laughs> he is wealthy beyond compare. And yes, he is influential. Just last week he convinced the prince to use five inch lace for his cravat instead of the accustomed for it. <laughs> is that so bad to have the ear of royalty? I will admit that Sir Percy is wildly admired for his sallies. They stick him here! They seek him there. There's Frenchies seek him everywhere. I have heard some talk that Sir Percy might be a bit empty-headed. Huh. But surely he is no different from most of the lords and ladies of London. Well, men like your sir Andrew risk their lives to fight against evil. Percy, Percy plays his place and writes idiotic portraits. So you do not love him? I do not love him. He doesn't love me. I practically threw myself at his feet, begging him to trust me. He did him this morning. Do you know where he is? In London, at his tailor. I am pleading with him to save Armand and to <coughs> refuse to see his tailor. What has happened to Armand? The same thing that will happen to everyone in Paris eventually. I am uncertain as to his fate. He may have saved him. What do you want to leave? I am anything but poor. But you are forever tied to what? Fool. He never talks about her. Who is she? Lady Clementine Blakeney, Percy's mother. She is lovely. And apparently quite bad. Maybe it runs in the family. Oh. <laughs> Everything I've learned about her has been seen some common gossip. Which is it? Help me, Suzanne. What are you doing? I need a closer look. Please, let's call for a No. No. Someone's. What? What is it? There's the design of the signet ring. Family crest. It looks like a small flower. Maps of France. <coughs> Paris. This looks like a diagram of the Ile du Bat Monastery. And this is the Costa Anglais. Oh no! This is the Bastille! That's where the prize is <coughs> being held. Percy didn't go to see his tailor. What have I done? What do you mean? Percy's not a fool. He never was a fool. He's a better actor than I ever was. I have to get to France. I have to warn Percy. What if Percy about what? One Percy about Chauvelin. Chauvelin gets correctly. That's why you were so smug. I <coughs> understand. My darling Suzanne, if we ever want to see a loved one again, your father, Sir Andrew, Armand, and, and Percy, dear, very pretty Percy, then I have to leave right now. <laughs> I am certain, completely certain. I mean, I will know very soon. Oh. We're back. I trust this means we have the identity of the Scarlet Pimpernel. Yes, I mean, I am almost completely certain. This would be a bad time to make a mistake. I'm correct. I will have the Pimpernel in my custody tonight. Who is it? Who is this Blay? Well, I... Well, come home. You're not going to keep it all to yourself. Afraid I will steal the glory? Of course not. Enough! You may take all the glory. But that also means you should take all the blame, should you fail. I have an irresistible faith for the Pimpernel. I'm all fans of Here tends today from a small assignment. What appeal does Armand have? Apparently, our young revolutionary has fallen in with the League of the Scarlet Pimpernel. I do not believe the Pimpernel will leave a man behind. Armand's <coughs> and I. Armand's fiancée, is she not? Indeed. But she possesses that which Armand and his sister lack. The courage to support our new republic as we purge it of its traitors. She awaits his arrival after her performance tonight. There, I will arrest him and detain him, dangling him like a prize to that bloody royalist. Paul, capture the Pimpernel. You shall no longer sit and work for the committee. Your seat on the committee will be a shift. But, fair, and I think you shall find yourself facing Prosecutor Foutier, begging for your life. Sally. Lady Blakeney. <coughs> Is Sir Percy with you? Lord Anthony? Come to 
Honour of the new university. Sally, allow me to introduce His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. <laughs> Your Lordness! <laughs> I'll never get a pint at this rate. Sally, is it? Ah? Ah? <laughs> mama would never approve of a public house. Your mama will exit the carriage. She'll never know. Let's have a pint. Perhaps you wish to walk down to the water first. It's a lovely walk out on the jetty. Yes, ladies, let's walk down to the water. Come, Miss Amelia, even your mother will approve of the benefits of sea air. And then we'll come back for a pint. Then we'll come back for two pints. <laughs> <laughs> you brought the Prince of Wales to the fisherman's rest? <gasps> well, I'll get to hang flat. Sally, <laughs> I need some assistance. I need to get to France. I need a ship. Oh, Milady. I need to ask you. No. I need to tell you. No. I don't know what to do. The prince will be back with those silly girls in no time. He thinks he escorted me here to meet Sir Percy. Sir Percy! Uh, do you know where he is? No. Do you? No. <coughs> do you know something? What about your brother?
piece of. Oh, a piece of what, Mademoiselle? Is something bothering you? Did you receive more poems tonight? <laughs> You should go home. The sewing can wait until tomorrow. But I haven't seen Mademoiselle do too far of performing. Mademoiselle, now. She forgets she works for me. Jean, I need to find Armand. You just missed me. Listen carefully, Jean. I need to find both Armand and Sir Percy. Chauvelin has turned on Armand. Paul, turned on Armand? Yes! You and Armand need to leave the city immediately. I'll help you pack. Wait. He's done to the testimony costume. I am no traitor that needs to flee in the night. Armand is the traitor. What are you saying? Armand turned his back on the Republic to help the Scarlet Symphonie. Paul Chauvelin protects France. He still believes in the Republic. Paul is on his way here. No! You were a fool, Jean. Armand loved you. It's a pointless, Marguerite. She's helping Chauvelin. He did all of this to gain Chauvelin's love. She loves only the Republic. He has none to give a woman. You are mistaken, Marguerite. I loved a woman once, but she was fickle. She wasn't fickle, Paul. She never loved you in the first place. It's no matter. The love of a woman is worth less than a cheap brass trinket. And it tarnishes even faster. The Republic may exalt you today, Paul. You, Lord Fiedre, or Tamara, all of you will see how she repays your devotion. <laughs> hmm. Now that I am about to deliver the Scarlet Pimpernel, I will be a national hero. And not even an incorruptible prince to be able to show more power. You don't have the Scarlet Pimpernel to deliver. I have you. And? Your husband will not leave you in my hand. You yourself have noticed my husband and I are estranged. How I thank you yet. You know, Armand, your sister here gave up her own husband <coughs> just to save you. <laughs> no, that's <coughs> not to be loved. God save the king. Percy, run! It is a trap! Hold on to that bell! Tightly! <coughs> Gentlemen! We must be quite the theatre buff. Step <laughs> Percy, please. Give me a moment to enjoy this. I like this feeling very much. Wait, I want to make it sweeter. Your wife, Sir Percy. I will send Marguerite Armand and the Scarlet Pimpernel to the guillotine. Sink me, Chevelin. You do seem to hold the winning hand. Here. Oh, tell you I dress better for your moment of triumph. We don't all have your fashion sense. Mind if I dig the knife just a little deeper? Do you want to know how I discovered the Scarlet Pimpernel's identity? Marguerite, you should take a bow. The woman who betrayed the Scarlet Pimpernel, her own husband. It may have been your finest performance. Tim, if she did you such a favor, why are you in such a hurry to take off her head? Seems to me the Republic should be thanking her, not killing her. Oh, but that is the problem with your new utopia. You keep killing people willy-nilly. <laughs> you want to save her, Sir Percy? It seems the gentlemanly thing to do. Write a confession. Tell me the name of every member of your precious league of the Scarlet Pimpernel. Write down every Frenchman who ever aided your little band of Mary of Ben. Write down every traitor, and then and only then, I will spare my Paul! <laughs> and Armand. Marguerite and Armand. Percy, do not betray your men for me. Well, Chevalier, throw an Armand and we have a deal. Fine. Once I receive your signed confession, I will send them to England. This is a mistake, Paul. Robespierre would not approve. Citizen, perhaps we should take him to the Bastille for the night, just in case this is some sort of trick. Have him write his letter there. We can keep these two as collateral. Excellent thinking. If you'll write a letter to the prison governor, we can make sure that he is kept in the North Tower, away from the other prisoners. <laughs> Another excellent idea. He's devious. Don't take your eyes off him for one moment. And bring me his confession the second it is finished. May I say goodbye to my wife? 
Shuffle puff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly. I'm no monster. Hmm. My darling. Percy, I'm so sorry. I meant to warn you, to save you. Instead, I doomed you and your men. Don't write that letter. Let me die with you. Madam, please. Isn't it time that we began to trust each other? Trust that what I'm doing is the best thing? Percy, I do trust you. Completely. Oh, it's touching. <laughs> but rather pointless. Here's the letter. Take them now. <laughs> God sees the king. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. And if not, well, there's always your head. <laughs> Citizen show blood was this will lock us away from everyone. <clears throat> Is there anyone else locked up here? Yeah, so Aristo. Which Aristo? What's it that? He told you. Citizen Shoveland said keep this one. <laughs> Isolated from everyone. Is he the He's harmless. Lock him up then. Madam, have you so little faith in me? I am the Scarlet Pimpernel. 
comes the first thing. I accept your offer. On guard. Sorry about this. I must be a little twitchy. If you're nervous, Sir Percy, then the battle is mine. So, you are my only wonderful and useless pimpernel. 